However, this hot primordial soup was very smelly. Why it was smelly? Because it was rich in formaldehyde and hydrogen sulfide. So this hot smelly soup or primordial soup behaved as a source of origin of life. So therefore, we know for any chemical reaction to occur, we need to have reactants which will react to form the product. We need to provide a minimum amount of threshold energy and we need to have a catalyst. So all these conditions were very much there in that primordial soup. The water was hot. That heat acted as a threshold energy or the activation energy for the chemical reaction to occur. Those minerals which were floating on the surface of water which leached out due to water dissolving them they started floating they started reacting with each other and eventually elements combined to form molecules and molecules into organic compounds and hence biomolecules and cell so had there been no such pockets of hot primordial soup on earth life wouldn't have originated it is presumed as rain started pouring down ultraviolet radiations from the sun it started breaking water vapor into oxygen and hydrogen. Now this oxygen was very highly reactive nascent oxygen. So therefore two nascent oxygen combined to form oxygen molecules and three nascent oxygen combined to form the life protecting gas that is ozone O3. So the moment the ozone was created on the surface of the atmosphere, ultraviolet radiation stopped entering into the earth. Because we know ultraviolet radiations are mutagens, they cause mutations. So it was quite necessary to stop this influx of UV rays. So who helped in shielding this UV rays? Ozone, the protective layer. And hence, along with decrease in temperature of the earth and shielding of the ultraviolet radiation by ozone, condition became favorable for life to originate. So when these chemical reactions were occurring in this hot primordial soup, this is what is called as chemical evolution, which was proposed by Operin and Halden, and which was proven by Stanley and Miller's experiment in 1953. So according to the theory of origin of life, life originated from such type of hot primordial soups. Now mind it, these hot primordial soup were not uniformly distributed throughout the globe. These were those areas which were confined to deep hydrothermal vents very very close to the sea floor almost 8 to 11 kilometers deep into the ocean floor where the temperature is tremendously hot almost 600 degrees centigrade 
and that is what is called as chemical evolution chemosynthetic life originated from that hot high pressurized primordial soups the temperature in those hot thermal vents are extremely high not only the temperature even the pressure because we know for every 10 meter we go down the ocean floor there is an increase of one atmospheric pressure so therefore under that high pressure and high temperature life evolved there lies the secret of how archibacteria prokaryotic organism actually survived in such a hostile conditions which eventually evolved to give rise to complicated multicellular eukaryotic organism and hence diversification of life the earth which we see today was not like this it has undergone a series of and sequence of changes when the earth was created from big bang it was a orange ball of burning gases so we term it to be a orange earth now it started cooling down it became black representing carbon it cooled further it became gray earth ashes so as it further cooled down rain started pouring in so it became a blue earth as water solidified due to ice age it became a white earth and eventually as that miserable condition went through all floras and plants started appearing on this earth it became this beautiful present looking green earth so we started with the orange earth black earth gray earth blue earth white earth green earth in between there is a very very important sequence of event when oxygen started appearing on earth when ultraviolet radiation started breaking water vapor into nascent oxygen and hydrogen and two nascent oxygen combined to form oxygen so initially the earth was anaerobic but later on started became aerobic so with the emergence of oxygen on earth the rocks oxidized it became red the so red earth so orange earth black earth gray earth red earth blue earth white earth green earth so this is the sequence of events which underwent so therefore the gestation period that means if big bang occurred 20 billion years ago and if we consider the earth was created 4.5 billion that means it took 15.5 billion years for the earth to become earth like so we can consider 15.5 billion years as a gestation period of earth for such type of changes to occur for earth to become earth like which can sustain life and when there is water there is no dearth of life so this is what tells us about the origin of earth and most importantly 
The location of the Earth in the solar system is extremely important. Our Earth is a third planet of this solar system. Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, Neptune. So the location of the Earth is so strategic. It is neither close to the Sun to be extremely hot, neither too far away from the Sun to be extremely cold. So the distance from the Sun and the Earth is 93 million miles. Now this distance is optimum. The temperature becomes optimum and therefore life becomes possible. Thank you very much.